Anger is a response we choose a whole lot of, isn't it? It's the first response we choose when we try to solve a problem, and there isn't any solutions in anger. Yeah. There's a, a, it's not even an emotion that we're looking for, anger. What we're looking for is happiness. That's what we're all looking for, right? Human happiness, our happiness, comes from a sense of purpose. That's a real human need for happiness, isn't it? But we've actually found out that animals feel happy all the time. We've done research to find out what makes different animals happy. If you want to go down an amazing YouTube wormhole, look up the rat tickler. <laughs> yes. That's a real man. Yeah, there's, that's, that's on a fucking business card, people. Yeah. There's a man walking around scientific conventions all across this country going, George Shaw, rat tickler. And you're like, yeah, you like to make animals giggle. That's incredible. Right? This guy spent years, years doing research to find out that rats might be the only animal that likes being tickled. <laughs> Which is a joke for me and seven other people in this room. <laughs> dogs are some of the happiest animals I've ever met in my life, right? What do dogs need to be happy? Yeah, they are, right? Yeah, I love dogs, right? They're so happy. What do they need? They all only want to be fed and cuddled. They don't give a shit about destiny. To a dog, destiny is the fourth new smell you brought home from the strip club. <laughs> But we have a very narrow view of happiness in society, don't we? It's a very narrow view of happiness. And we're taught that since we're very little. Since like elementary school days, we're taught that. We're taught to just go to school and you learn your facts for the test. That's it. You learn your science, your history, and your math for the test. And that's it. Don't bring this question shit in here. Then you're going to go to gym class and someone's going to throw a dodgeball at your face and you're going to want to cry, but don't. Because that's going to ruin my family name. All right. What you can do is go home and journal about it, but don't show anybody that journal. What you want to do is bury that journal so deep into the ground that Satan himself cannot find it! <laughs> and then you graduate and go to college and discover what alcohol is, and then you just pour limitless amounts of alcohol directly into your head. You don't forget the amount of zeros in that loan you took out to go to college. <laughs> and then eventually you wake up from a drunken stupor, you're like, holy shit, I graduated. Well, now what? Well, now you got to get a job. Oh, in my field? No. Uh, just like a job. Oh, okay. Well, I guess I'll make like a decent bit of money, right? No. Uh, you're going to be broke. Like forever. <laughs> yeah. Like end of time forever. <laughs> well, shit. Now what? Well, now you got to uh, find love and get married by the time you're 30 or else your grandparents and their friends are going to be super disappointed in you. And you better make that marriage last, because even if you think divorce, you better pack up your bags, so you're going to be run out of town anyway. And when that marriage does last, the sex in your marriage is going to go down every year, after a year, after a year, until you just find yourself alone in a basement, jacking off to a Coles catalog. <laughs> or the thought of that really cute barista you saw earlier today. He was so adorable, wasn't he? Maybe we do have the confidence to be bisexual after all. Yeah. And then you are dead. And then you're dead, but you got that sweet 401k and that Roth IRA to fall back on, right? Pretty happy. It's a very narrow view of happiness, in my opinion. Yeah. Happiness isn't even a cool emotion, is it? Think of who we idolize in the media, movies, comic books. Never the happy character. Now, it's always some character that's been through some shit, all right? Lost loves, parents brutally murdered, and they're a little bit too muscly to get drunk off whiskey, so the only way they can feel things is to beat the shit out of criminals. <laughs> that's basically Batman and Wolverine, right? But if Batman took care of some of his issues, you know, talked it out with Alfred, well, and got into a very loving relationship, and the guy that killed Bruce Wayne's parents met him in a bar, and he was like, hey, let me talk to you for a second. Uh, I've been doing some thinking, in prison, obviously, uh, and I think murdering an eight-year-old's parents in the back alley of a theater, not the best decision I've made in my life. So I want to make it up to you by buying you a drink. I get it, you're a billionaire playboy, you can buy out this entire bar, but I want to do what feels right and buy you a drink. And Bruce Wayne looks at this man and goes, you know what, buddy? We're good. <laughs> Batman comics would be burned in protest of happiness. Holy shit, would you see nerd rage across this country like you've never seen it before. 
There's a, a psychiatrist by the name of Martin Seligman, and he says that happiness is a human right, which I believe. I believe that every single human being has their right to happiness. That means there are 7 billion different rights to happiness, and at least 1.8 of those billions are going to piss the rest of us off. <laughs> That's why it's important to find out what makes you happy and go try to achieve it. Because if you can do that, maybe you can help somebody else figure out what makes them happy and help them achieve that. Our purpose is to each other. We need to start validating each other's strengths a little bit more. So if you have a friend that likes crochet, fuck it. Let's sit down and crochet some shit together. <laughs> you might find out that you like crochet, right? How excited would you be? You guys see this shit? I made that with my hands. It is a hat. It took me nine and a half weeks. It fits zero human heads. <laughs> but I made that with my hands. If you want to tickle some rats, let's do this. <laughs> let's get some gloves, jump into the sewer, and make Master Splinter giggle. <laughs> if you want to be nude, I'm all game, right? I'm not going to be nude with you, but I'll validate the shit out of your nudity. I'll be the best hype man you can find. Right? Do you guys see this shit? You guys ever see a pair of tits this good on a man before? Probably not. <laughs> Philanthropy is a really big way we find happiness. And if you don't believe me, think of the last time you gave a dollar to a homeless person. You didn't shut up about that for a week and a half. All right? Every bar you went into. Just, you guys see that shit? Huh? Homeless guy. Dirtiest human being I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, I gave him a dollar. Not change, no. I pulled my wallet out in front of a goddamn stranger and I touched him. I touched him twice. And I looked at him right in the eyes and I pulled a paper bill with a dead president on it and I pulled out his hands and I put it in there and I said, God bless you, and I'm a fucking atheist. <laughs> Somebody should buy me a drink because that was the last dollar that I had. <laughs> That's how good of a person I am. There's two things I think we need to do, to, uh, two questions I think we need to answer in order to figure out what makes us happy. First question is pretty easy, what makes you happy, right? The second one gets a little bit tougher. Do I want to be happy? That's a big tough question, isn't it? It's a big tough question because happiness as an emotion has a lot of guilt associated with it. And when you have an emotion that has that much guilt associated with it, that's when anger becomes a very easy choice to make. And when anger becomes an easy choice to make, that's how you find yourself alone in a basement jacking off to a Coles catalog. <laughs> yeah, but if we can choose happiness, maybe we can upgrade that to a Macy's catalog, right? <laughs> Some high-end shit, yeah. Or fuck it, maybe we have the confidence to be bisexual today. Happiness with value and purpose is going to be the newest idea humanity can enjoy since sliced bread, which isn't really funny, but it's poetic, right? Sometimes you've got to throw in a little piece of poetry to keep that hope going. Yeah. 